Good morning friends, I am Dr. Mahesh Mohite, a pediatrician, pediatric intensivist and neonatologist from Panvel, Maharashtra. I am going to speak on palpitation and unpleasant awareness. Not a very common complaint, it is basically palpitation is noticeable heartbeat that may be concerning to the patient. Either it may be too slow, too fast or too strong. For obvious reasons, it is complained in a verbal child, usually above 5 to 7 years. Though the pathology may be happening in the early age, child may be presenting in a different way, maybe irritability, tachypnea, occasional apnea in a very small infant. So, palpitation is complained in a later age group only. Why we are worried about palpitation? Simply because we are worried about a life-threatening underlying pathology like arrhythmia. But is it true? Arrhythmia is a common cause of palpitation in adults, but not really a very common in children. Rather in children, the more common causes are the physiological ones like fever, anemia, exertion, anxiety, etc. And a common arrhythmia is like SVT, only in later age group. Actually, this is much more common in infant and neonate early age group, where children are not verbal and they would rather present with signs of cardiac failure or excessive irritability. Pathologically, why one gets palpitation? It is due to higher stroke volumes, classically seen in hyperdynamic circulations like anemia, fever, thyrotoxicosis, beriberi, etc. It can be because of arrhythmia, because of the ineffective cardiac stroke volume during arrhythmic episode. Once you get a subsequent normal beat, which will be like a bigger stroke volume, which will be like a palpitation. So it can be tachy or bradyarrhythmia. Increased sympathetic tone as in case of anxiety or certain drugs or it could be increased cardiac mass like hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Now when we look at a common condition which will lead to palpitation, again it comes to more physiological. So it could be fever, anemia, exercises, emotional arousal, anxiety, panic attack, hyperventilation syndromes and uncommonly it could be premature with atrial contraction, premature ventricle contractions. Other condition like acute rheumatic fever with valvular disease can come like palpitation, it could be hyperthyroidism, mitral valve prolapse. There could be life threatening conditions like arrhythmia as already mentioned as in cases of WPW syndromes or long QT syndromes or cardiac structural abnormalities. It could be hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, it could be sick sinus syndrome or pacemaker malfunctions. Rarely, it can be life-threatening non-cardiac condition like hypoglycemia, toxic exposure or pheochromocytoma. So, this is kind of enumeration but I repeat again, more often than not, those are the exaggerated physiological responses. We need to go through some screening questions to evaluate palpitation to prevent a further crash. So, first question, is the child coming with the symptom, is he sick looking? Is there a history of syncope, congenital heart disease? or a cardiac surgery done in the recent past? Is there any family history of sudden death which may be mimicking or which could be hinting towards probable arrhythmia or similar episode in the family? It's kind of a susceptibility you may call. Is the child febrile with a symptom sign of infection which would hint it is because of fever? Is the child looking pale because of anemia, palpitation may appear? Any history of toxin consumption? Any emotional events recently, especially in adolescents? or it could be any signs of hyperthyroidism, any flushing, hypertension, tachycardia as in suggestion of pheochromocytoma rare cause. Is the ECG normal? So when we come through all this history, you definitely would take a ECG. So find out if there is any evidence of anatomical, metabolic or ischemic changes in the ECG. And finally, when you are in doubt, you definitely do a 2D echo or a cardiology consult. So the most important screening questions in your OPD is, is the child sick? Is the child had a syncope associated with this palpitation? Is there a history of congenital heart disease or any history of cardiac surgery? And is there any family history of sudden death which may hint towards probable sinister underlying pathology? Rest, as I said, are not very significant from the clinical perspective. The typical character of arrhythmia inducing palpitation is usually sudden onset and offset. A transient palpitation episode with or without syncope followed by total recovery and no post event sequelae at all. This kind of event, if you go into details of the history, perhaps would hint 
towards a likely possible arrhythmia and needs a complete evaluation. Coming to clinical evaluation, what we definitely need to look, there are certain subtle markers which should be looked for. So, abnormal vitals like disproportionate tachycardia, hypertension, subtle tachypnea, certain cardiac features like subtle murmurs, gallops, abnormal heart sounds or subtle signs of CCF like mild tachypnea, hepatomegaly, few basal crepes in a bigger child, they may hint towards probable cardiac pathology or it could be extra cardiac like pallor, goiter, exophthalmos, etc. All those things related to palpitation underlying pathology need to be looked for and should be evaluated further. When the event has already happened, happened in most of the cases the child is brought up post event. What evaluation are you going to do? When you going through this history, you see anything suspicious or anything clinically significant, then definitely do at least an EEG, ECG, which may show you, sir. So, typically a WP syndrome which had happened, had given rise to SVT, once it is recovered, you will see a classical delta stroke on the R wave or small PR interval, the short PR interval. You also may be looking for any long QT syndrome which may give occasional brugada. You will be doing certain test like hemoglobin which will hint, which will give whether this underlying pathology is anemia. You may be doing occasionally the thyroid function test. You if when you doubt you definitely do a 2D echo. In fact, today's era when the echo is so easily available, one should do in most of the cases. Drop I and pro BNP to indicate towards underlying cardiac pathology and cardiac failure. Rheumatic fever workup when clinically suitable and sometimes when in doubt of a arrhythmia it's over and the ECG is not showing the evidence and you're strongly suspecting that do a 24 hours holter monitor which obviously is in the cardiologist perspective. So a cardiology opinion is a must in this kind of a case. What is the practical approach in a sick palpitation child? The child is brought sick and he had a history of palpitation. Obviously, there is immediate issues of airway, breathing, circulation. You stabilize the child appropriately on a ALS guidelines. You need to treat or uh, rule out or treat if there is existing hypoxia, shock or obvious arrhythmia present at that time. Take a 12 lead ECG. If child is sick, then sometimes continuous ECG monitoring is desirable. Send emergency labs of all kind that is appropriate to this condition. Do a 2D echo and rule out right threatening causes of my, like uh, arrhythmias, myocarditis or hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Now, when you see some sick like this and child need to be transported, this is a very, very critical issue. Palpitation in a sick child is a very high risk transport. Stabilize the child optimally in the basic center. Preferably call the cardiac ambulance from the higher center with a trained attendant. Continue monitoring and treatment during the transport. Have defibrillator machine for SOS application during the transport and always have continuous communication with the referral center. So friends, to summarize on palpitation in a pediatric age group, palpitation in children is more common due to physiological causes and not very commonly because of arrhythmias and similar sinister causes. You need to look at the red flags in palpitation, which is very important. If there is associated syncope, if there is a known case of congenital heart disease or a post-op cardiac condition, or if there is family history of sudden death, you need to be taking this seriously and need to evaluate thoroughly following this event. Get at least an ECG in an episode of palpitation. When in doubt, complete evaluation in cardiologist opinion is justified. Friends, that's all about palpitation. The next talk is going to be on fainting attack, a diagnostic challenge by Dr. Palni Raman. Thank you very much.